How different would your life look if you committed to making even just one small positive change for the next four weeks? If you are ready, join me for the annual one month challenge. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura from How To Get Your Shit Together and I help busy people cut the crap and get back to happy. Every August I run a one month challenge that is designed to kind of instill a new habit or maybe break a bad old one or tackle a large task or just generally try to improve life. It is now in its fifth year. I will link the previous challenges in the description. This year I am stepping away from the screen a little and going on a bit of an analog adventure and I hope you will participate too. Obviously, I have made a career for myself online as a content creator, so I am not at all saying that screen time is bad. But if you are like me, then you spend significant amounts of time in digital land. If that is the case for you, or maybe you just feel that your life is a little bit stagnant right now, you will definitely benefit from redressing the balance. Last month, Sam, a scout, and I went on a family vacation to Las Vegas, and we took several trips while we were there, not just around Nevada, but also Utah and Arizona, and I have to say it was one of the best holidays I have ever had. Now, I am very much a home bird. I like my creature comforts, and I don't like flying. But even for me, getting out there and experiencing the world and trying new things and just marveling at the vastness and significance of the world is such a tonic. It is so rejuvenating and humbling and breathtaking and inspiring. I have lived in the US for two years now. I know! And I haven't even scratched the surface of all that there is to see and do. And truth be told, I didn't even do that in Ireland. Plus, sitting all day is slowly killing me. So yeah, I'm doing this to save my life. So every day for the month of August, I am going to get outside. Now, maybe that sounds crazy <laughs> to some of you, but there are some days when I genuinely do not even leave the house. Now, I do try to move on a regular basis just to keep the blood pumping, but yeah, there are plenty of days where I don't see the other side of my front door. So leaving the house every day, and like not just hopping in the car, driving around for a while, <laughs> but actually letting my legs carry me. Letting my lungs fill with fresh air, or as fresh as I can get in the 21st century. But that's not all, because anyone can just walk around the block and call it good. Nope. As well as that, also inspired by my Vegas trip, I want to visit at least five new places in the month of August. Nowhere, you know, like exotic or far flung, <laughs> but maybe exploring a nearby neighborhood or going through a stroll in a local park that I've never visited before. But I am hoping that they will be slightly exciting places. So if you are thinking of taking part too, then here are some suggestions I have for making it a success. The first is to have options. If you are doing the same thing over and over again, you're quickly going to get fed up of the whole thing. So yeah, give yourself some options now. It could be something like, you know, strolling around the block or bringing your kids to the playground, doing some gardening, visiting a local museum or gallery. But that way you have some variety available to you in advance. You also need to have some form of a backup or fallback plan. You know, on the days when you are busy and tired and the kids are cranky and the weather's crap and you really do not want to go anywhere, have some ideas for what you can do and places you can go anyway. My fallback plan is to sit on our back deck and read a book. So on the days when I don't want to go for a walk or I'm a bit pushed for time or I really don't feel like it or maybe I'm just feeling a bit down in energy or ill or something, I will grab a novel, head out the back and dive in. Also try to mix things up a little. Like I said, if you are doing the same thing over and over, it is quickly going to lose its appeal. So if you find that you're walking the same block, maybe try and walk it the other way. 
Or you could try focusing on a different thing each time you do the walk. So maybe the next time you could focus on all of the different types of flowers that you see. Maybe the next time it could be counting cars or checking out all the license plates to see how many different states or different counties or wherever you're from, how many different places you can recognize. Next time you could try not stepping on any cracks, lest you break your mother's back and just shake it up a little. If you live in kind of an urban environment, you know, a city or a town, try it looking up. The top floors of buildings are usually so much more exciting and interesting than what is going on at ground level. So if it is safe for you to do so, turn your eyes a little bit skyward. And as for the new places to visit, um, I got asked a lot <laughs> when I was planning our trip how I was finding kind of strange and unusual and interesting places to go. The thing that I use most often is Atlas Obscura. You type in your location or your destination wherever you're heading to and it will bring up a list of various different places and activities that are a little bit off the beaten track. Lesser known monuments, hidden attractions, etc. It's actually how I found out about the blacklit Kiss mini golf that was tucked away at the back of a Las Vegas hotel. That was an interesting experience. So yeah, 100% recommend Atlas Obscura. It's what I'm going to be using to find some interesting places this month. Top of my list is this funky retro ice cream parlor that is relatively close by. Another option then is De Palo. So this is something that I have just recently discovered. Essentially, it shows you all the Instagrammable places. I used it to find seven magic mountains. I had no idea it was so close to Las Vegas. So as soon as it popped up on the app, off I went. The two major downsides to the app are that one, it is iOS only for now, and two, the places on it are quite limited. I think all of the locations are US only and even then it's mostly just the main kind of cities and tourist hotspots. But it is definitely still worth a look to see if your city or your destination is on it. It will show you all the like photo worthy places to stop and it will also show you pictures of other people who have been to those locations so that might give you some inspiration for the photos that you are taking. You can also submit your own location, so that is an option if you want your city or your locale to be featured. But between Atlas Obscura and De Palo and maybe the listings in your local newspaper or the nearby feature in Google Maps, pick your five destinations for the month, schedule them in, top up your fuel tank and away you go. Remember to tag me and use the hashtag so that I can see you being all intrepid and stepping away from the screen and getting outside and living your best analog life. And follow me if you want to see where I'm off to. If you need a little more help spending less time online, I will link a video for you. It is full of great tips for curbing a social media addiction. And if you don't think that this particular challenge is for you, but you still want to try something new and exciting for the month, then check out this playlist of some great habits that you can try that have changed my life. And until then, Gara Mila Mahagrev. I guess I gave me a shift to Galua. Slow on.